Good evening and welcome to series two of the Youth Voices and Civic Engagement, Hope in Our Community, Youth Take Action. I'm Kayla Fontenot. I'm Kiana Kelly. And we're gonna dive right into the overview for this series. The overview for this series is one small act of kindness goes a long way. Adults and youth will have a candid discussion about kindness and generosity and how these character traits impact their daily decisions. Through this process, we hope to learn more about ourselves and the importance of giving back to our communities. The four constructs of civic engagement are civic action, civic commitment or duty, civic skills, and social cohesion. Civic action or participation in activities such as volunteering or service learning to help better the community. Civic commitment or duty are the willingness to make positive contributions to society. Civic skills are the ability to be involved in civil society, politics, and democracy. Social cohesion our sense of reciprocity, trust, and bonding to others. All right, the five principles of citizenship are character, knowledge of government, community service learning, public policy, and issues. Now we'll hear from my partner from St. Landry Parish, Ms. Gina Valian Ridor, on the adult perspective of civic engagement. Hello, I'm Kayla Fontenot, Youth Development Agent at the Southern University Ag Center, and I'm here today conducting a short. Sorry, we'll resume that part Here we go. Uh, interview with Ms. Gina Valle Ridor on the Youth Civic Engagement Series number two. So Ms. Gina Valle Ridor is currently the facilitator of the Opelousas High School Academy of Biomedical Sciences. She is a na native of Opelousas, Louisiana. She is wife to Manuel Ridor and mother of three to Naya Sterling and Anderson. Her educational background includes a master's degree in molecular and cellular physiology, a master's degree in development, developmental education, a bachelor's degree in physician assistant programming, and a bachelor's degree in microbiology. Her affiliations are currently with the Louisiana Association of Educators. She partners with the Sustainable Ag of Rural Development Institute, a satellite campus of the Southern University Ag Center. She also helps facilitate religious education classes at Holy Family Catholic Church in Lawtel, Louisiana. So Ms. Redor, we'll move on to the questions for this segment. And the first question is, what is your view on civic engagement? Well, civic engagement or civic participation to me is any individual um, activity or group activity that addresses public concerns. And it could be anything from volunteering, to Bolton, to even a community garden. Okay. Question number two, what age did you get involved in civic engagement? Oh gosh, um, that's probably the hardest question. <laughs> you know, one, I, I had to go back and look exactly what is community engagement because come to find out I've been doing it almost all my life, just not giving it that title. And so probably the youngest age I could fully recall where it was my decision to do something was fifth grade, about fifth grade. And I started doing a summer school at my house. Um, people were referring to my parents who were both educators asking, can your daughters um, tutor my children? And I literally, we had an outdoor kitchen and I literally had people come in and I tutored them, we had summer school. And you know, they bring it back lunch. And um, that was me trying to get them up to age, you know, so they can move on. So education is one of those, those factors for uh, community engagement. And so um, I was focused on education at that point. Okay. And after that, I just started engaging in um, church because part of your community engagement is not just uh, politics would be non-political it could be different sectors it could be religious sectors as long as you're looking for a common goal in uh, in um, fostering positivity in the community and that's the common goal for community uh, engagement okay all right last question in your opinion why should youth get involved in their community and what are some benefits of it oh gosh um, it's been found that Involvement, volunteering in your community, it really helps to bridge the gap 
between society and the individual connectedness. And so it's been studied science-based. Uh, with my background being in sciences, everything is evidence-based. And it's been evidence-based that people or organizations that engage in community and civic and, um, participation, they're able to respond and um, recover when there's an emergency crisis. They have that connectedness with other organizations so they don't feel that they are they are disconnect. Some of the benefits for community engagement is it eliminates depression because of the fact that you are finding yourself bonded with a group with a common goal. Okay. It eliminates the isolation. It actually is um, part of health. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Healthy People 2020. It's a government initiative that focuses on five domains economic stability, education, health and health care, neighborhood, um, and built environment and social and community context. And they found that volunteering is the number one ingredient to bridge that gap of disparity between social and community context. And so with that, it, um, it helps a person physically because they, they are now self-aware of where they belong and where they fit in and how they can improve themselves in the community. Number two, health-wise, it eliminates depression. Number three, um, educationally, they're now connected, they, they're now invested in their community and they're aware or more informed of the decisions they are making. And then economically, they realize that with the positive feedback in the community, that the community can now build up and it's leaving something for them to take back with them and to leave to their children. Even though that's a, a, a long reach, children right there could see the benefits of their work. Okay. And that gives them self-worth. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes our interview for today. Ms. Ritter, we'd like to thank you for giving us your time. And we look forward to working with you again in the future. Thank you. Oh, thank you. you. Okay, after hearing Mrs. Redor's uh, video, uh, did your thoughts change about civic engagement um, as it relates to an adult's perspective? And this question is gonna go to Ms. Sydney Marshall. Um, no, my thoughts did not change on my perspective about civic engagement. Um, after hearing the adult perspective, because I've already had, I already had a idea of what it was, and she didn't really change my perspective. She just kind of elaborated more on what to think about it. Okay, great answer. This question is going to go to Miss Brianna Clary. Do you have any ideas on how you can contribute to civic engagement? How you can um, possibly spread the word to youth or even adults? What would you do? What I would do to spread the word to adults or youth with social media being big and I think spreading the word on huge platforms and get information out to people who aren't aware of concerns or encourage you to take action to, to their community? Oh yeah, social media is huge. That's one of the fastest ways to um, get information out aside from the news outlets. Great answer. So we're gonna do just a quick little um, fact finder game. Um, so let's get into it. All of the questions have um, four multiple choice answers, and we have four questions. So, first one, which of the following best defines civic engagement? Crystal, Ms. Crystal Hawkins, which one do you think best describes civic engagement? Is it any individual or group activity addressing issues of public concern, a group of people with similar political goals, an invasion of privacy by the federal government or a formal agreement to a party? 
I think it's any individual or group activity addressing issues of public concern. Let's see which one is the correct answer. And that is correct. Any individual or group activity addressing issues of public concern is defined as civic engagement. Great. Next question. The United States typically has blank voter turnout, especially in comparison to other countries. Is it high, equal, low, or average? This question is for Ms. Brianna Clary. Is it low? That is correct. In the United States, we have very low um, voter turnout. All right, number three. This one is gonna be for Ms. Taylor Holden. What is the minimum age requirement for being an engaged citizen? Is it 21, 14, 16, or 18? That is correct. And the last one is going to be from Ms. Sydney Marshall. What is the first step toward actively participating in the election process? Is it registering to vote, running for office, voting in a primary election, or voting in a midterm election? Registering to vote. See, you got it right. And that is correct. Great, great, great answers. So we would like to thank you for joining us for our Youth Voices in Civic Engagement today with our Youth Take Action series. Our next series is going to be on Thursday, April the 22nd with social media activism, Youth Voices Matter. And we would like for you to join us. Thank you. And until next time, goodbye.